All right, guys, why are animals symmetrical? Whole video essay about it. Let's check it out. Animals range in size. As what we are technically animals and we're fairly symmetrical, right, guys? Kind of like. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Shape and biology drastic. It's like how the cell divides, bro. Replicates and then it looks the same as it, how it replicated. So it's just like one single cell that looks one way. It just becomes two single cells that still look the same way or something. I don't know. But there is one thing that unifies more than 95% of them and every known land animal. I mean, it makes sense though. If they're, if they're symmetrical, guys, like... How do we, like, walk if we were, weren't symmetrical, man? Something that almost all animals inherited from an incredibly... Seems the best way... I mean, cars are symmetrical, right, guys? Like... The ancient common ancestor, hundreds of millions of years ago. Squid, insects... Oh my gosh, he looks cold! Reptiles... And he looks cold, bro! Oh man, I would have that as a pet, bro. Mammals may be very different in a number of ways, <laughs> but they are all connected by their symmetry where they have a left and a right side, which are mirror images of each other. Facts, bro, facts. This group of animals is one of the largest categorizations used to label a group in the- Guys, we're vertebrates, right? The entire animal kingdom. And they I don't know what a mollusk is, though. They are known as the bilaterians because of their bilateral symmetry. All right. Whoa, what is that? Oh, this is the intro, guys. Moth-like media. The two-sided symmetry that most animals have. Guys, I've never tried lobster. I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of seafood, guys. Let me know if you guys are in the comments below. It's so common, it is sometimes easy to miss that some animals have a different type of symmetry. And some animals have no symmetry at all. Oh, snap. What is it? That's an animal, bro? It looks like the coral reef. Branch. Wait, no, that thing, huge thing is an animal, bro. Just outside of the bilaterian group guys. are the Nidarians. They contain animals like jellyfish, sea anemones, and coral. Sea anemones. My grandma used to always make call it like sea anemone, enemy, sea anemones. <laughs> Nidarians are united by a type of cell they have called a nidocyte that lets them Whoa. deliver a sting to other organisms. Now those things are deadly, bro. But they also have a different. Just look at them. It's like a brain. It's like a giant brain that can fly, man. Type of symmetry to bilaterians. They have radial symmetry, where their symmetry points outwards from a central axis, usually a body, and spikes or tentacles pointing outwards from a central point. Can't believe those things exist, bro. They look scary, man. And they make up almost all of the non-bilateral animals that aren't microscopic. Aww. There are also spikes. It's alive, bro. It's so weird. Sponges, <laughs> which apart from some notable exceptions, have no symmetry. They are multiple celled organisms, but the cells have not been organized in any sort of symmetry, and the shape of the organism is dictated by which side of the sponge is receiving more nutrients. And although this covers most types of symmetry that animals exhibit today, these aren't the only types that have ever existed. In a time known as the Ediacaran, over 540 million years ago, some creatures took on different forms of symmetry still. The fossil of an ancient organism was found in the 500 and Dude, that, that looks like a leaf, not an organism, bro. How, how do we fossils even form, bro? Did he just get, like, stuck in the rock or something? 60 million year old rocks of central England that was named Charnia. And then later, a whole fossilized ecosystem of these funny organisms were discovered on the east coast of Canada. All we have is formations in rocks, guys. That's interesting. This ancient habitat that predated the Cambrian explosion was named the Avalon Explosion because most of the fossils have been found on Canada's Avalon Peninsula. Charnia and the other organisms were named Rangiomorphs, and they looked a lot like leaves, although they lived too deep in the ocean to be able to photosynthesize, so couldn't have been plants. Hey, bro. There's a whole underground community of... The unknown, bro. We only explored like 20% of the deep ocean, bro. Who knows what's down there, guys? What they are isn't entirely known, but most scientists think that they are stem animals, a very ancient lineage that branched away early in the evolution of animals that has no descendants that survived into the present. But one of the most unique and interesting things about these organisms is that they grew in a different way to anything that is alive today. It's what are they talking about? As they grew symmetrically in fractals. They grew- Sorry guys, my, my, my mind is thinking about- it, it was just a bad- 
Uh, I have flashbacks. Through by repeating a singular basic pattern over and over again, just being okay. a smaller version each time. Oh, it's cool. But the Ediacaran wasn't just all strange fractal organisms, and by uh, Dude, it's so amazing I could just see life right there. Like, that's a separate organism right there, man. Atrians do start to appear in the fossil record towards the end of the period. In the rocks of central Australia, there are preserved ecosystems dating to about 555 million years ago. Dang, bro, that is so long, man. We only li live like 100 years at max. Usually like 120 years maximum, guys. Containing wow. The Earth is so old, man. The earliest bilateral animals in the fossil record. There was one ancient animal that lived among these ecosystems known as Spragina that looked a lot like a trilobite, and some scientists believe that they were related to the trilobites, although this isn't known for certain. And there was another bilatrian named Kimberella, which is a small animal that was thought to have lived like a slug, feeding off microbial life on the sea floor. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. Some scientists think that it may have been an incredibly primitive mollusk, but again... Oh, that's a mollusk, bro. I have those outside of my house. With such ancient creatures, relationships... Those things are kind of cute. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Animals are difficult to work out. There was also a small worm-like animal called Icaria wariutia that was about oh. the size of a grain of rice that burrowed into the sands of this ancient Australian seabed. They're just trying to survive out here, man. So by the Ediacaran, bilateral animals had evolved, but they were fairly obscure and were outnumbered by animals with either radial symmetry or animals with other forms of symmetry. They're living, they're living in harmony, guys. But during the Cambrian jellyfish are for the wind. In explosion, the bilaterians became much more successful, with many new forms starting to appear. And today, they are by far the oh most my gosh. common type. He's got of snow on his little nose, man. Nowhere, not much else. So why is this? <laughs> Once animals have Whoa, evolved a certain a lynx, right? trait, this can open up or make other evolutionary pathways more likely. For example, different carnivorous mammals have evolved retractable claws on separate occasions, but carnivorous reptiles and birds haven't. And the ability to produce silk has evolved in a few separate occasions among different animals. These are literally like superpowers that they have, but we are the ones with hands. Most of them don't have hands. And you know what I mean? Arthropod groups. We could utilize machines, but somehow most animals can't utilize machines. But it is very rare in other animals. So like, you know what I mean? The, the spider, I don't think... Ma imagine, like, a, in a 100, 200 years, we'll find spiders that can use phones and communicate and stuff. That would be cool. Of the arthropod body or their lifestyle makes the evil... But we will, we'll, be, we'll be like much more evolved. We won't even need like phones. We'll be like evolved out of there, bro. Technology. Silk production, more likely. Bilatrians are the same. Their two-sided symmetry has encouraged or made oh. the evolution of other traits down the line. That's why they always, they always have, be having flies on them, man. <laughs> more likely, they have given them an advantage over the animals. Those are my favorite kind of fish, bro. Ever since Finding Nemo. With other forms of symmetry. In its simplest form, the body plan of a bilatrian is basically a tube with two openings, a mouth and an anus connected by a digestive tract. Over time, sensory organs, or at least the most dominant ones, have developed at the head end above the mouth. So they have a body plan with a defined front end that gives them a clear direction of travel. I like us, right guys? They encounter stimuli, like light or chemicals from food, and then move forward to apprehend it so their body shape enables for very purposeful movement, which gives them a big advantage over non-bilatrians. That for the most part use lures or just drift through the ocean waiting for the f Dang, is, is whoever's filming this, if it's not like a drone, they're awfully close to that jellyfish, man. Come to them. Man. There are non-bilatrian animals like box jellyfish that actively hunt fish rather than drifting towards it, but in the grand scheme of things, they are quite slow animals, and they are the exception rather than the rule. There's so many stuff around, but it, <laughs> it's hard for him to get them all. Whereas complex sensory organs at the top of the head and purposeful precise movements are commonplace among nearly all bilaterians. Additionally, two-sided symmetry is a good shape for moving. As a Pretty much, yeah, we went through that earlier. It offers a platform earlier. to have an equal set of limbs or fins on both sides of the body. Having a symmetrical set of limbs to either walk across the sea floor or push through the water are perfect to propel forward in a straight line. Man, 
we're so strong, but we can't swim faster than fish, guys. So we're not, we're, we're not at the top of the food chain, especially in the water. Well, in the water, we're not in the top, the top of the food chain. On land, we are, we are, guys. And offers a lot more stability as they can push from both sides of the body with equal force. And so this would have helped them move faster. That guy's doing the sidestep, man. Faster, but also more efficient. Efficiently, then can they not walk forward like that? Actually, some can, but that it, 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 I guess it's just fast for, faster for him to walk that way. Non bilaterians. <laughs> this may also be the reason why bilaterians are the only animals that have con guys. They, those ones are skinny, bro. Well. Those they look like they need some food well, <laughs> because once out of the water, oh, gravity snap. only because crocodiles are just like giant lizards, man. Comes less forgiving, and a good stable body shape only becomes more important. They're so slow on land. It's also possible that bilaterian body plans has caused these animals to become more intelligent. The phenomena where the sensory organs have trended to become more concentrated at one end of the animal over time is called cephalization, and it is very important because it correlates with the nerves being concentrated on one side of the body as well, or in other words, the development of a brain. And over time, this process of nerves concentrating on one side of the body has created a well-defined head section and sophisticated brain in very different animal groups. Let's go, let's go. Groups like vertebrates, cephalopods, and even arthropods. That's so trivia, it has so many... Look at all the eyes it has, bro. And although radial organisms... Like a fly. ...isms definitely have nerves, there is no species alive today that matches the complex brains in multiple bilateral groups. Although symmetry offers many advantages, there are times it can get in the way of a specific lifestyle. Alright, let's see when it has disadvantages, guys. Style, as there are many examples of animals that have evolved to break their symmetry. Crossbill birds have a beak that doesn't meet in the middle, and instead cross over. These birds have specialized to eat pine cones, and their unusual beak shape helps them act- Guys, I've never seen a bird like that. ...access the seeds contained further inside. There are also species of fish, like place, Whoa. that have made the extreme adaptation of orientating their entire body on its side as its natural position, to be able to hide itself on the sea floor better, in order yeah, that is trippy. to still be able to see while hugging the sea bed, they had evolved to have both their eyes on the side of their head. They could see both sides of the street. And probably most famously, out of the symmetry breaking animals, is that some species of male crab have one claw larger than the other which can sometimes be so large that it makes up half of their body weight. Unlike in other animals, the giant- Damn bro, I'd be scared to put my finger in that claw, man. I'm good on doing that. That guy, that guy looks strong, man. It doesn't seem to help them. In fact, it might actually hinder them in their everyday life, as they can only use one claw to get food, whereas female crabs use both claws. Male crabs have a large claw to help attract females and fight off rival males. In these examples, the animals are still largely bilateral and just have the odd feature that breaks the trend of the rest of the body. It looks like a dead, like a dead fish that's on its side, but now it's alive now, just living on the bottom of the ocean, I guess. That's but there cool. are animals that take this much further. Starfish and sea urchins, also known as echinoderms, may look like radial life, and their nervous system is spread around the body like radial organisms. But they are actually bilaterians. In fact, at the larvae stage, these animals have a clearly defined head, and although as adults they appear radial, studies have shown that both starfish and sea urchins have a preferred direction of travel. Bro, oh, is that the head? So at some point in their evolution, oh, so selective scary. pressures force starfish yeah. and other echinoderms to live more like a radial. Look at that fish calling that little crevice his home, man. So having two-sided symmetry isn't always the best way to survive for every animal. But the bilateral body plan shows that we sometimes take for granted how similar we are to even the most distantly related animals. Thank you let's go, let's go. for watching. A big thank you to all my patrons. If you like content Guys. like this, then consider becoming a patron as well. Consider becoming a patron. I'll put, the, I'll put his link in the description. Guys. Let's read a few comments. It's also it's just interesting that despite being primarily symmetrical, we and other animals have organs that aren't. Oh yeah, we don't, huh? For example, our hearts are only light on our left side. I wish all bilaterally symmetr symmetrical relatives a very pleasant <laughs> evening. Yeah, he's using some big vocabulary words, but he has to do it.
to be clear, there's tons and tons of organisms that grow in fractals nowadays. They're just plants. It's, for example, broccoli and cauliflower. Imagine a jellyfish with a brain. Now don't imagine that ever again. That'd be kind of scary, bro. It's like precursor to humans, bro. It's, this is something I, that I would have never ever realized, even though it's obvious most animals are bilateral. Facts, bro. Facts. But yeah, that's the video. Check out the the creator in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Please consider donating. I don't make any money doing this currently. Um. Yeah. Hopefully, we get this channel monetized later.